<clears throat> How's everybody doing this morning? Wonderful. I'd like to reverse the order of the service a little bit and um, do the announcements right now since they are pertinent to our uh, truth lesson. And also, would you raise your hand if you don't have a sheet that was passed out? Uh, Glenn, would, do you have any left to give to them? Raise your hand so Glenn can give you one. I'm getting in teacher mode, so I have <laughs> all these things I'm passing out now, two more weeks. Uh, membership Sunday is August the 21st here at Unity. And this is the time to request or renew your membership at Unity. Everyone is always welcome. We love having you here as a congregant and to learn more about unity and the teachings and the unity way of life. But you may choose to be a card carrying, and literally there is a gold card, a card carrying unity member. And if you do, we want to make sure that we know who you are and we stay in contact with you and know what your needs are, your spiritual needs, and how we can best serve you. We also want to make sure that our members, card-carrying members who are voters and volunteers and Bible foundations of unity, understand clearly what we are about so that you can responsibly vote for the programs and the classes and the activities and even the ministers. And so we want you since you're voting on very vital things, it's vital for you to understand what Unity is really all about. Unity co-founders Charles and Myrtle Fillmore modeled their teachings at Unity Village and everything that they did there, and everything reflected these teachings, and we try to do the same thing here. So we'd like our voting members to really understand the deeper teachings, and I know, looking around, most of you do. To provide you with these teachings, should you choose to become a member, and uh, we also plan to offer classes in the fall, relevant classes, uh, more details on that later so that you really get it. Again, those of you who prefer to attend services but not be an active member, you're always welcome, and we hope that you'll benefit from greatly from this and that maybe someday you too will choose to be a member. So for today, I'd like to continue concentrating on some of these essential unity teachings, these ideas that we all need to know and review periodically. Well, why would that be, you wonder? I'm really in teacher mode now. Why? <laughs> so that we can, with these teachings, manifest the miraculous lives that we were all meant to manifest. When we live these teachings, we truly create heaven on earth for ourselves. The Fillmore certainly did model that. We free ourselves from all kinds of obstacles to the happy, healthy, and abundant life that we were meant to live and that is your birthright. That's what we were meant to do. That's what life is all about. But unfortunately, we get lost in this day and age and a lot of obstacles that keep us from that, manifesting that wonderful heaven on earth, abundant, miraculous life that we can live. So first, we've been reviewing the five main principles of unity, and I passed out the, Glenn passed out the sheet there if you want to refer to that. Um, you might want to look at your sheet. First of all, there is only God in the universe. There is only one power in the universe. Everything is God. And secondly, you are a part of God. You have the spark of divinity within you. Third, we create our whole world with our thoughts. That's why we concentrate so much on truth lessons about how to change our thoughts and see things. <clears throat> Fourth, the importance of prayer, because prayer is when we realize, we don't really reconnect with God, there's never been a break in the connection, but we remember 
our connection and oneness with God. And five, it's not enough to just know all these principles, we have to live them. And when we do live them, we know they're accurate. The second area of the unity teachings that we've been looking at is the 12 powers that Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore said that we are all capable of accessing and manifesting all the time. But to do this, we sometimes have to get rid of blocks. It's like we're out here and those 12 powers are in us, but we've got some blocks that we need to get rid of that impede our access to these 12 powers. These powers, and you can look at your sheet, I wrote them out for you, are faith, strength, wisdom, love, power, imagination, understanding, will, order, zeal, elimination, and life. Manifesting these powers are the secret to peace, love, and abundance, no matter what is happening out there in life or in our lives, in the outside world. These 12 powers are always available to all of us. We just need to learn to access them. The third area of the unity teachings that we're concentrating on is the metaphysical understanding of the Bible. Understanding that every person, every place, every object in the Bible is part of you, of your psyche. Those stories are our stories. They're us. For example, the story about Moses. I picked that because I'm sure most of you know that one well. Remember Moses leading the chosen ones out of Egypt. Moses is the part of us. We all have a Moses part of us, which finally learns who we are divine. Remember, Moses finally learned that he was Jewish. He was not uh, the son of Pharaoh. He had thought his whole life that he was Pharaoh's son. He had been raised as, like Pharaoh's son. Moses' people, the other Jews, the chosen ones, symbolize our people, our thoughts, the chosen ones in us. It's not about the Jews and the story, it's literally the Jews, but the chosen ones are all of us. The chosen ones were enslaved in Egypt. Egypt is a symbol of materialism, uh, metaphysically. Many of our materialistic thoughts enslave us when we just think that the material, physical world out there is all there is. Moses had been raised as one of Pharaoh's offspring because he had been found as a baby, remember, by Pharaoh's daughter. We, like Moses, often don't know who we really are. Second unity principle, we are divine. We don't know that during certain periods of our life, maybe. We don't know that we're divine. We're just running out there on automatic, like stimulus response machines, which is what the world does to some of us sometimes. But when we finally realize that we are spiritual beings, second unity principle, that we all have the spark of divinity within us, we're all one of the chosen ones, then the Moses part of us is awakened, realizes who he really is, and frees our thoughts, our programming. He frees his people. We free our people from our former misunderstanding of who we are. We then leave our Egypt. We all have an Egypt. We leave our Egypt, so to speak. The Moses part of us leads us out of slavery, out of our Egypt, our former slavery, and leads us to our promised land, which is what unity is all about. We are no longer bound to or enslaved by just the physical level of reality, of life. But remember, the chosen ones spent 40 years in the desert after they were freed. Uh, they went through all kinds of doubts and reversals to their thinking. They started worshiping false gods and sinning. 
Don't we all go through some of these desert times of our lives even after we know better and we've been freed from certain, certain thought systems? It was the next generation that finally made it to the promised land. And that's us. We often learn intellectually who we are, but then due to circumstances, we slip back into the desert of our lives for a time before we truly embrace and live on the higher plane. And when we do, that's when our lives become truly miraculous. We are the chosen ones because we have chosen to follow a higher path than just the physical plane, which is often referred to as maya or illusion. Bottom line, Understanding the unity teachings includes one, understanding and living the five unity principles. Two, it's understanding and manifesting the 12 powers, all 12 of them. And three, understanding the metaphysical, esoteric, or deeper meaning of the Bible, which incidentally is the deeper level, the metaphysical level of all religions as Charles Fillmore taught. The Fillmore studied and were profoundly influenced by world religions, especially the Hindu path. The Fillmores understood the essential truth of all religions. They understood truth, that's what they taught. They discovered what is described by unity writer and minister, Reverend Dr. Paul Roach, uh, who I met three weeks ago and was with in several classes with. He is incredible um, as a teacher. And he talks about the golden thread which runs through and always has run through all valid spiritual paths. That's why we call sermons, I used to be Episcopalian, we call them sermons. And we call them truth lessons because it's about truth. They teach the eternal truths, not just the dogma of one religion. Unity is not a religion. It was never intended to be by the Fillmores. It is a path. <clears throat> I'd like to return to the second area of the unity teachings on your sheet, if you'll look at them, Roman numeral two, the 12 powers. Now, each month, is designated as having a power that should be concentrated on. July's power is understanding. That's why today I'll be talking a lot about understanding, understanding the unity principles and the 12 powers and the metaphysical meaning of the Bible, etc. Understanding. You notice here these candles that I've lighted down here. There are seven of them. The seventh one is understanding. Next month I'll add another one. So the July candle represents understanding, which is the point of today's lesson. So what does the power of understanding mean at unity? What is there really to understand? Why do the 12 powers even matter? Is it just some more stuff to learn and stay busy reading about? No. First of all, we must understand that we all possess these 12 powers. We, if we're not manifesting all of them in our lives all the time, we just need to start removing the thoughts that are blocking that understanding. Secondly, we must understand that everything in the universe is God. We and everything are a part of this one unifying force. The quantum physicists have verified this unifying force of the universe. Nothing and no one is separate from it or apart from it, except in our egoic, dualistic thinking. We have certainly seen evidence of this unity of all life principle in the last few years, all of us, for example, the seemingly isolated cases of COVID-19 over there in China, okay, totally isolated, why should we worry about that? 
it soon became a world pandemic. We are all united. What affects the stock market in London soon strikes the Arab countries, and pretty soon it affects Americans in terms of such things as oil prices. Too few workers to produce computer chips in the Far East soon means that there are not enough new cars to buy in New Orleans. That unifying glue that connects us all includes all knowledge, all wisdom, which is why we say that God is omniscient. Omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. Omniscient, sort of like a massive Google network. My father, who was raised in unity, used to talk to me long before I understood what he was talking about, and he tried to help me understand computers. There were no computers then. I'm really giving my age away, aren't I? And he said, it's like one big machine that you just program with everything. And this machine is omniscient. It knows everything, all wisdom, all facts. And just that concept, and I realized he was trying to describe God one of the characteristics of God. You ask your question maybe, you pray for guidance, and the most accurate answer, and with all the facts at its disposal, this universe, this massive Google, this God, this omniscience, among other things, guides you to the right word, the right action. Right understanding is knowing this and opening up to it and allowing yourself to access this presence, this omniscience, this power. We often say, let go and let God. That's the easy way to say it. And the second unity principle means understanding that we are all a part of this universal energy, intelligence, and presence, as the quantum physicists have been telling us for the last 50 years, and it's become pretty common knowledge in the last 20 years. Interestingly enough, the Hindus were saying that 8,000 years ago, but nobody believed them in the West. It wasn't until our modern scientists came up with the exact same thing using mathematics instead of religion, to say the same thing. And then, oh, yeah, okay. The famous Catholic theologian, Meister Eckhart, once said, the seed of God is within us all. If we understand this second unity principle, we can nurture that seed in us and let it grow, and it will produce its like in our life. It's like planting an oak tree, an oak seed, you know? It, this seed has all the potential of the mighty oak right there in this little tiny seed. The DNA is all there to become a perfect oak tree. All we need to do is just let the seed grow to know how to grow and manifest at, maybe give it a little water, make sure it's uh, protected when it's small, etc. But genetically encoded already in that seed is the perfect oak tree, and that's the way we are. The perfect seed, the God seed, is in us all. We just need to give it what it needs and let it do its thing. A little water, a little sun, a little air maybe. Maybe occasional blocks need to be removed in order to nurture the tree, our life, like maybe pulling weeds or taking the caterpillars off the tree. This usually involves for us a change in our thinking. But the seed is there, ready to sprout, ready to go. It's in us. Jesus said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. Metaphysically, Jesus the Christ was referring to the Christ or core or vine within each one of us. Charles Fillmore told us that out of this core in us 
grow our 12 powers, our branches, so to speak, our 12 powers, which branch out and manifest in our lives. Just imagine, you got these branches coming out of you, all 12 powers, according to our understanding. Unto him that hath it shall be given. We kind of have to make sure the soil is fertile. Unto him that hath it shall be given. When we already have opened up to, and we don't have a closed mind, then we can start understanding we must have an open mind and fertile soil in order for our wisdom seed to grow into fruition. One of the biggest blocks is to remain strictly on the material plane, thinking that the physical plane of life is all there is. And you know how many people in our day and age think that and operate that way. That's how many people miss out on the miracles and the eternal wisdom which creates heaven on earth. Jesus said, these things I do, ye shall do also and greater. He taught that we too should be able to manifest everything that he did. We too can manifest the 12 powers. We can create more good and joy and love and abundance than we can even imagine when we get through the blocks and use those 12 powers. Let me give you another example of how we can view these 12 powers so that our lives can be more abundant. To return to the oak tree example, maybe we have many perfect branches. You've got all these perfect branches, maybe six or eight of these powers. All right, here's you, here are all your branches. You've got six or eight. Our roots go stronger by the day, but if too many of our branches are cut off on one side of our tree, maybe by a traumatic childhood or PTSD from war experiences, whatever, then all of the life forces go into the other side of the tree, those branches, and problems and irregularities take over our total tree because the branches over here are not functioning. Everything's going to nurture these branches, these powers. We are strained then, and we have problems. Many of us encounter these branch-altering situations in life, especially in childhood. That's one of the things we talk about here all the time. If certain branches of our life force, maybe on this side, are cut off by wrong thinking or wrong understanding, or physical or mental poisons that we inflict on ourselves, our tree gets all lopsided and it's unhealthy. It's the same with our lives. When all 12 of our powers aren't working, it's like trying to drive a car on not enough cylinders. They're not firing. However, with right understanding, things can be restored. That's what we work on. That's what the spiritual path is, is spotting those things and working on them. To return to the tree simile, if certain branches are not allowed to grow properly, say on this side, or are cut off, it gets unbalanced for us. Our personality, our health, and our thinking get affected. We're lopsided. And since our thinking creates our world, unity third principle, our lives don't work. We've got these great six or eight branches over here and these are cut off or dead, and the tree's like that. So, if the tree is not working, what we do, if we notice, for example, that, that um, we develop the powers, say, of strength, imagination, and will, very, very well developed on one side, but we lack, for whatever reason, love, wisdom, and life on this side, we might become very powerful and dictatorial like a Hitler because those powers are working, but the love, wisdom, and life powers are not. Another person may develop the powers of love, imagination, and enthusiasm over here, but be undeveloped on this side of strength, wisdom, and power. This person often gets used 
and abused and taken advantage of, scammed, whatever. So you see, we need all 12 powers fully developed to function fully. Our true fulfillment or salvation is developing all 12 powers. All of the limbs of our tree are healthy. So right understanding in regard to these 12 powers would be to work on developing the 12 limbs of our tree. Faith, wisdom, enthusiasm, power, strength, elimination, what to get rid of, imagination, understanding, will, love, and order and life. And this understanding, my friends, is what we aim for here at Unity, every Sunday in every class. Right understanding is comprehending and developing our 12 powers. It's understanding and living the five Unity principles, which takes a whole lifetime to understand. And it's understanding how to read the Bible and other spiritual works metaphysically so that we can use the eternal wisdom as a blueprint to build our lives. That's what the Bible is. It's a blueprint for enlightenment, for the kingdom of heaven. I'd like you to listen to Sue Riley's I Am the Thinker. I bought a lot of Unity music when I was up at Unity Village three weeks ago at the National Unity Ministers Conference. And I want to start sharing some of this music with you. This particular song, I Am the Thinker, illustrates the third Unity principle, which states that we create our world with our thinking. You might refer to your sheet. Um, the words are on there. Shake my life. 
principle is that song about? Three. Three. Bravo. Everybody makes a hundred. <laughs> so go forth this week and give some serious thought to understanding these basic unity teachings. Try to understand them at the very core of your being, not just intellectually. And know that when you put them into practice, you can change your thinking and you can change your life. One, the 12 powers that you have within you. Two, the five unity principles which contain the wisdom of the ages. And three, a true understanding of the Bible which is your story here and now. So go forth and be assured that all is well. We've been dealing with lots of changes for the last two or three years, but remember there is one thing that never ever changes, truth. Let it guide you and fill your life with love, peace, and joy that you deserve. And that, my dear friends, is the highest form of understanding. And so be it. <laughs>